Are come you, on, come on over here, Douglas. Are you gonna curl in the squat rack? Is this <laughs> yeah. how you do it? Is this how you do it? Yeah, we were. Uh, we're gonna break down some of the things you don't want to do uh, if you want big arms and you're curling. So curls, barbell curls, staple bicep movement. People Especially still, in the squat rack, people yeah. appreciate that. People we'll still mess it. it up. Not really. So Adam, why don't you show some common mistakes? Why don't you start with the first one? Uh, which is the, oh yeah, there we go. Oh, oh he's swinging. Oh, yeah. He's 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 swinging with so, that. So uh, Adam is doing a lot of movement here with mm. the curl, swinging all over the place. Believe it or not, um, unless you're an expert at understanding how to do a cheek curl, yeah. you lose a lot of tension with this. So that swinging is taking tension away from the bicep, where he can be strict with it, keeping the wrist straight, and come up and squeeze the biceps at the top, versus mm. doing the swinging. I think I've even seen people like swing just their arms, so their arms are coming up here. Right, so you see this so a lot too. Elbows are coming forward. See how I? Yeah. Now he's moving his body, short but range. I've even seen this. Now, what's the number one reason why people swing all over the place with the barbell? They're not strong enough. <laughs> they want to use more weight. Yeah. You know? yeah. So uh, you know your your arms, your biceps, your muscles don't really know how much weight you're lifting. They just know how much tension they're creating. You're better off going lighter with stricter forms. Well, so you hold it. on this for a second because I want to show Doug on the side. If you come on the side of here, Doug. If you pay attention, I used to tell people, pretend like you have it, like this needle that goes through the elbows on both sides. And the function of the bicep is to, to flex at the elbow. So I actually want his elbow to be in a stationary position, but I also want it fully extended all the way down so the bicep's gonna go through full range of motion. So when Sal curls up, I'm paying attention to that elbow. Notice his elbow doesn't move. So he's anchoring here, he's not swinging, he's not swinging here. Both are kind of pinned to his body. And notice when he comes to the top, from all the way to the top, there's full flexion. He go, if he goes any higher, now the shoulders kick in to do that work, so it's not necessary. So he's taking now the stress off the, sh off the bicep, and now he's putting it on the shoulder. So he wants to keep tension on the bicep the entire time, so when he comes up, he's gonna stay in that flex position. The other mistake people make is at the wrist. So they'll come to the top, and then they'll curl the wrist, trying to get it closer to the bar again. Now I can relax at the top here with this curled wrist, but once I bring my wrist back a little bit, oh, I've got tension. It extends right the lever, the and then now you feel right in the That's bicep. That's right, so when you're doing this exercise with the barbell and you're curling it up, you wanna keep your wrist nice and straight and you wanna try and prevent what's good. This is a natural, by the way, your body's gonna to wanna to curl mm -hmm. the wrist because it's gonna to try to make the exercise easier. Remember, your body has no idea you're doing an exercise. It thinks you're trying to do a movement and it's gonna- It's trying to be efficient. It's gonna pick every shortcut possible and one of those shortcuts is this risk it's growing? always going to choose the easiest path. When we're trying to build muscle too, it's rarely that's the case, right? That's so right, that's right. Paying attention, at the most important piece, I think, is the elbow positioning, keeping it in that fixed position as if he had a pen going through his side, and then that's fully contracted, keeping the wrist nice and, and straight. And that's it. Now, you can do cheek curls, since it is an exercise, but it's a very advanced one, and it's for people who really understand muscle tension and can use a little body English but still maintain good tension. Most people just can't do that. Once they start swinging, it becomes far less effective and, and more dangerous. Well, and when you start talking about movements like that, like cheat reps, I give the analogy with sports, it's like somebody who's coming to play basketball and it's their first week of playing basketball and you're trying to teach them a 360 dunk. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's something that can be done in the game, it can have its place, uh, but there's so many other things that this person needs to learn before they do that. That's the same thing goes with a barbell curl that you're cheating reps up. Uh, I mean, you got, if you got years under your belt of training, you've already developed a, a, a built physique already, then adding that into your arsenal, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but, but for, for most, most people, people, it's taken away. It's taken away from the benefit. And lastly, the other mistake that I see with curls is this. Starting in this position right here. I see this all the time. Right. Again, we're not taking the bicep through full range no, of motion. No, I mean, look how much range of motion I'm missing by stopping here rather than fully extending out. If you always do your curls like this, this little change right here will put size on your biceps. I'm not joking, it makes that big of a difference. So you wanna get full extension and full contraction, straight wrist, minimal body movement, and you'll make your bicep curls that much more effective. Look, we post a new video every single day, so subscribe to our channel. Also, 30 days of coaching, it's free, mindpumpmedia.com.